Welcome to the Peter Sefton Furniture School. Today we're going to be looking at veneers and cutting and taping them up. When you buy veneers, you buy a full pack and you must try and keep that pack of veneers consecutive. As they run through the pack, the veneers will actually change slightly as the grain goes through the pack of veneers. I'm looking at actually cutting them and taping them. And here's a couple that I did earlier just to show you the general thing we've been looking at. Three different tapes we're going to be using. The traditional gum or fish tape, which is ideal to be using if you're doing animal glue veneering because we're introducing moisture to the veneer. Not an ideal thing to do generally, but when you're animal glue veneering, there's a lot of moisture in the veneer anyway, so we can use those. If we are animal glue veneering, we can't use either this Tessa tape or original cellar tape, which is one of my favorite ones to use because the moisture in the veneer will not allow the gum or the stickiness on here to actually stick on to them. I tend to use these tapes if we're doing uh, press veneering when we're not having any real moisture onto the veneer. If we're doing more production work, then we'll be using this kind of veneer stitcher. A mechanical stitcher is a handheld one or actually going through a machine, much like a sewing machine. This actually puts a hot glue mount onto the surface of the veneer. Once this is veneered up, that would actually be turned over so it goes in the glue line as it goes in the press. In a hot veneer press, this glue would then remount and disappear. Or there is a possibility, and it does happen sometimes, that that um, glue can actually fade through the face of the veneer. So something you have to be very, very careful on. I just put those two to a side for a moment. If I have my pair of veneers, there's two different ways, or the general ways we tend to joint those veneers up, is either slip matching, which is the standard way of doing it, or the more attractive way is book matching. And today I'm looking at book matching these veneers. So what we tend to do, we have a pair of veneers here, we can either slip match them, or the more attractive book matching. On that way I've done it there, the grain's actually going away from each other, which isn't that attractive. It's much better if you can to have the grains coming towards each other and they form more of a cone shape as a Christmas tree would be naturally. Using my scalpel, I'm just going to set him on my length of my veneer. I've marked him out for the length I'm looking for. I'm just going to use my scalpel on some general cuts, not putting too much weight onto the veneer, just letting the knife do the work. And here we are, go through. So those bits can go down there. Now we'll be looking at actually cutting the veneers off to their width. I'm going to look at taking about 5 mil, about a quarter of an inch off the veneer. If you try and take too thin a sliver, your scalpel or knife will just work its way away from the veneer. I'll start off with this one. Putting my straight edge on there. Make sure you're keeping your finger and your thumb back from the cutting edge. Don't hold your scalpel at 90 degrees. Turn it over about 10, 15 degrees, which means the bevel on the scalpel will then leave you a nice square edge on the piece of veneer that you're keeping. I always put my straight edge on the veneer I'm keeping, so if my knife were to slip, I'm only slipping across the waste veneer. I'll just place my scalpel on there and just do a series of fine cuts. Again, not putting too much pressure on the knife. Let the knife do the cutting. Otherwise, if you're forcing it, you'll just rip the, the, the fibres of the timber and you won't get a clean cut. One last one, and we're there. I'll use my pencil just to mark a V. I now know that is my finished edge, and I can now match my next one up to it. If you're not happy about using the straight edge or the rule, what we can do is use a piece of MDF. I'll turn that one round because that's when we're going to match up. I've got a piece of MDF here which I've planed over my surface planer. When you're doing this, make sure you're using the front edge of the surface planer because any manufactured board has resins and glues and they're going to damage the cutters on your planer. If I do this right in the front edge of my planer, I still have the rest of my blades for my solid timber work. I've marked up the face edge mark, so I know that's the one I'm working from. The advantage of using MDF as a straight edge is that I can buy MDF up to 3 metres long or 10 foot. I can plane that straight, which means I can do some extremely long cuts. 
The other good thing about it, if I put this on here, I'll leave my quarter inch or six or five mil hanging over. I can either hold it by hand or I can put a weight on there to hold it. I now know that my veneer and my straight edge are being held. All I've got to concentrate is cutting the veneer. I'm going to use my scalpel again over at about 15 degrees and just gradually cut through my veneer edge. Again, don't force the knife through the veneer. Just let the, the knife do the work. I'm also using an MDF baseboard underneath. There we are, that one's cut. Take my weight off, move the board out, put my V on there again to show my face, and I should now be able to match up a nice clean pair of veneers. And then we're ready for taping up. I'm going to be using three different tapes uh, today. This being the traditional fish or gum tape. I've made this small jig up for it to sit onto. I can pull it off. I've just put a hacksaw blade on there. I can just cut them off to whatever length I'm looking for. I've got some which I've pre-cut off the length here. I've also got a small sponge here and a bit of water. I can just drag my veneer tape across there. And now he's ready to go onto my veneer. So I'll put him onto my veneer. But you can see the moisture here is getting into the veneer. That will make the veneer expand, which isn't really what we're looking for at this stage. It's not always the ideal tape to be using. The other tapes I do have here is this Tessa tape, which I've got my scalpel. I've laid a roll out of this, and also I've laid out a roll of uh, cellar tape. I'm just going across and cutting them at about 40 mil long, inch and three quarters. Just going to pick those tapes up with my finger, drag it off. The advantage of using these tapes is you can actually put some slight pressure across the joint by pulling the tape, which actually pulls that veneer nicely together. I'll put another on there as well. And I'll do some down the bottom here with some cellar tape. I've shown you the basics of actually putting the veneer tape on, but I'll now go and do the infill tapes as well and show you the overall effect that we get. I'll wet up another fish tape, get rid of some of the excess water. I'm going to put another one across the joint there, just leaving probably 18 mil, three quarters of an inch between those. And I'll come down with some other Tessa tapes on here as well. If we're using a veneer bag or a cold press, we can leave any of these tapes on the outside of the veneer as it goes in to the bag. The following morning, or the following day, once it comes out of the cold veneer press, we'll just remove these tapes. You have to be a little bit careful with the tesser or the cellar tape that it doesn't actually drag the grain back up. So maybe a 45 degrees to pull that tape back off again. You don't have that problem if you use the fish tape, but you do then have to reintroduce water to the surface of that veneer to get the tape off, and then you're left with a gum residue on the tape. You can be left with a gum residue on the tape, on the veneer I should say, from the tessa or the uh, cellar tape, but that tends to happen if you leave the tape on there a long time. I'd like to get this taped up in the press today and out tomorrow.